This video contains the solutions to the polar coordinates practice problems. For this first one, we're given the point 6, 6, and we want to convert that from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. So when we talk about converting back and forth between rectangular coordinates x, y, and polar coordinates r, theta, the relationships that we're going to use are that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and that the tangent of theta equals y over x. So in this case, since x and y are both 6, r squared equals 6 squared plus 6 squared, which equals 72. And so that means that r is the square root of 72, which can also be written as 6 radical 2. Now the tangent of theta is going to equal 6 divided by 6, which equals 1. And since the point we're looking at is in quadrant 1, that means that theta is the inverse tangent of 1, which is pi over 4. So our polar coordinates that we're looking for are 6 radical 2, comma, pi over 4. Here again, we're converting from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates, and we could use the formulas that we just saw in the previous problem, but since this point actually lies on one of the coordinate axes, 0, negative 8 is here on the negative y-axis, we can actually convert this to polar coordinates without having to use those complicated formulas. One way to do this would be to realize that the angle that we could use to get to that point would be 3 pi over 2, the same as 270 degrees, and then the r, the distance from that origin to that point, would be 8. And so one way to write this in polar coordinates would be to make the r 8 and the theta 3 pi over 2. Of course, that's not the only way to do it. Instead of rotating counterclockwise, we can instead rotate clockwise by 90 degrees pi over 2. And so the polar coordinates, if we do it that way, would be 8, comma, negative pi over 2. Both of these would be valid answers to this question. We've got one more, negative 2 radical 3, comma, 2. And again, here, since this isn't a nice point on a coordinate axis, we'll have to go back to those formulas that we talked about. So remember, the formulas were that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and that the tangent of theta equals y over x. So in this case, r squared is negative 2 radical 3 squared plus 2 squared. 2 radical 3 squared turns out to be 12 plus 4, which is 16. So r equals 4. Now the tangent of theta is y over x, so that's going to be 2 over negative 2 radical 3. So the tangent of theta equals negative 1 over radical 3 or we could write that as negative radical 3 over 3. And if we let theta equal the inverse tangent of minus radical 3 over 3, we end up with minus pi over 6. But the problem here is that if we use this r and this theta that we just got, we don't actually end up in the right place. r equals 4 and theta equals negative pi over 6 is going to get us to about there. We're rotating clockwise by 30 degrees, so that's negative pi over 6 and we're four units away from the origin. So that's where the polar point for common negative pi over six is. It's in quadrant four. But if we have rectangular coordinates, negative two radical three comma two, that point is in quadrant two. That point is over here. This red point, that's the one that we're looking for. So as we've talked about in class, we have to be careful about just blindly using these formulas, especially when the point is in quadrant two or quadrant three. So in this case, we have to adjust our answer, either by changing the angle from minus pi over 6 to positive 5 pi over 6, or we can modify it by changing the r from 4 to negative 4. So there's two possible ways that we could correct this mistake and get the correct polar coordinates, either by writing this as minus 4, comma, minus 5 over 6, or by writing it as 4, comma, 5 pi over 6, or by making any of the other adjustments, adding 2 pi to the angle, subtracting 2 pi from the angle, and so on. Now, converting from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates is almost always easier because we don't run into this situation where the formulas that we have work sometimes and don't work other times. To convert the other direction, all we do is let x equal r cosine theta and y equal r sine theta. So in this case, x equals 6 times the cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so that's 3. y equals 6 times the sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2, so that's 3 radical 3. So the rectangular coordinates that we get are 3 
comma 3 radical 3. We can do the same thing for this problem, but since that angle is a relatively nice angle, it's just pi, remember that that means pi is half a rotation, and the point that we're looking for is 10 units away from the origin, so we can figure out what the rectangular coordinates are without having to use the formulas. In this case, the x-coordinate is negative 10, because we've moved to the left of the origin, and the y-coordinate is 0. Now, if we didn't recognize that, if we didn't draw that picture, we certainly could use the formulas x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. But it's just a little bit easier in this case to draw this picture and see that it works out. But if I had plugged in what I would have gotten, cosine of pi is negative 1, sine of pi is 0, and so we would get the same coordinates that way as well. One more, negative 7, comma, 9 pi over 2. Again, a couple ways to do this. I would do this just by drawing a picture, because I recognize that 9 pi over 2 is a multiple of pi over 2, which is a multiple of 90 degrees. So that means I'm going to rotate 90 degrees 9 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 gets me to the positive y-axis. And then if I go negative 7, that means I'm actually going to go opposite of this direction. So instead of going up to that rotation that we just did, we're going to go 7 units down to the point here where this distance is 7. And so that's going to get us to the rectangular point 0, comma, negative 7. The x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is negative 7. All right, now we're talking about polar equations for certain types of curves. Now, a circle centered at the origin is one of the easiest way, uh, types of curves that we can describe using polar coordinates. So if the circle is centered at the origin and the radius is 10, that means that the distance from the origin to the points on the circle is always 10. And that means that the way we're going to describe this in polar coordinates is simply to say that r equals 10. If the circle had been centered somewhere else, then it becomes more complicated. But when it's centered at the origin, it's one of the easier types of curves to describe using polar coordinates. Another type of curve that's relatively easy to describe in polar coordinates is a line that passes through the origin. In this case, if the slope is the square root of 3, the curve is going to look something like this, where the rise over the run is the square root of 3. One way that I could think about that is by thinking about a triangle that has height square root of 3 and base 1. And then using our knowledge of trigonometry, we can see that that angle there is going to be 60 degrees. 60 degrees is also known as pi over 3, and so that means that all of the points on this line have a theta value in polar coordinates, have a theta value of pi over 3. And so theta equals pi over 3 is the way that we would describe this curve. Now if we had the line of slope negative 3, in this case, that line is going to look something like this. So here, if we draw our triangle, the rise of the triangle will be negative 3, the run will be 1, and so this angle in here is going to be the inverse tan of negative 3 over 1, y over x, the inverse tan of negative 3. That's not a nice number, so that's not going to work out to be you know, pi over 3 or pi over 6 or anything like that. That's just going to be some crazy decimal. And so in this case, that is the angle that we have. It's going to be theta equals the inverse tan of negative 3. And sometimes we'll have to leave our answers in those forms.